nada. Nada. Repetição. Nada. Repetição. 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 Não. Nada. Espaço. Negação. Ruído. Abismo. Repetição. 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 Repetição.
Ti Santo A extensão real repetição espaço Som Repetição Pai de Nada Nada Espaço Extensão Som Abismo Nada Extensão Não Repetição Indígena Real Repetição Som Não, não, não. 
Sublime. Nada. Nem. Soma. Anti. Nada. Não. Os mais Nada. 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 Espaço antigo. 
now. Hello, hello, welcome everybody and uh, welcome to Audio Talaya Extra, the Tuesday shows on, on this Twitch channel. Um, uh, today I'm, um, as you can see, I'm with Pedro Tudela and Miguel Carvalais. Hello, how are you guys? Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, welcome to the show. Uh, as you more or less uh, know, or if you don't know, you can, and we're going to share some, some links of their work. Uh, they are two artists uh, working from Portugal, and um, they are w doing something um, which for me is very interesting. They are working in different fields, uh, especially uh, making uh, electronic computer music and doing also you know, sound installation and also curating uh, with their label Kronika. And also they are doing something quite particular that they have been collaborating for almost uh, 20 years. And this is something <laughs> which is rather bold. <laughs> so 21. 21, 21 already, more 21. than 20 years. So uh, it's like, how you do it? We, we almost cannot <laughs> keep uh, uh, together our marriages. <laughs> how you, how, maybe that's the first question to start with. Uh, how, how it's been like this 20 years of collaboration? Because if you check, guys, if you don't know um, uh, Pedro and Miguel's work, um, it's a pretty amazing closed and, and, and pretty tight language. As soon as you dig into your work, I've been like these last few days checking your website, going through all your projects. There is a, um, um, a focus and, and a pretty clear idea of what's your own sonic and visual language. And, and for me, it's impossible to, um, to see where one of you ends and the other one begins. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe, I don't know, maybe we could get started from, from there. It's like, um, how, how, is, how, how do you do it? <laughs> Pedro? Well, I, I don't know. OK, one thing, it's, I think it's important. We are friends, so it yeah, helps, that's good. <laughs> let's say. It helps. 
but yeah, well, I remember, I don't know, we start uh, working. I, I'm a visual artist and also sound artist. But uh, our experience cross very well, I don't know, because um, I start to work as a visual artist and Miguel is a designer, so we cross the ideas. It's That's, that's important. And in fact, um, uh, now we are still crossing the ideas. For example, Miguel, it's more, let's say, <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know, uh, not so organic, but organized guy. And I'm more <laughs> organic guy uh, working with m different kinds of materials. And I don't know. I don't know what's the secret, but uh, yeah, we. Yeah, uh, I think, I think, I, th I think the collaboration works because you know, because we bring a complementary approaches to to our way of working. Uh, yeah. And I mean, obviously, we are we are very used to working together because whether there is a project in the horizon, whether we are preparing a performance or preparing an installation, or whether we are not, we have this regularity. We we try to work together very often. Mm -hmm. Because that allows us to read ideas, to discuss new approaches, and to just even if we're again, even if we're not working on anything in particular, that allows us to just talk through things. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, and then whenever we actually start working on something, um, yes, it's true that uh, you know Pedro brings some skills and some affordances and I bring some others but we tend not to have a very clear division of tasks mm -hmm. you know? yeah, yeah that's true that show that shows up organically at a given point because you know there are things that we can both do and there are things that uh, you know don't need or can't be made by four hands mm. and two brains and whatnot and then mm. at a certain point you know we have to assign tasks but it's not like we have these this very strict task assignment, you know, like, you know, a band as a drummer and a bass player and a guitar yeah. player. And hmm. of course that the guitar is always played by the same guy. Nothing like that. Actually, one of the things or the thing that brought us together initially was the fact that back in 98, 99, we were both working in different projects and, uh, yeah we gravitated at that time we we started gravitating towards using computer and a laptop yeah. as a live instrument mm. not just as a studio instrument, yeah um, or as a studio tool and that was what initially made us coalesce into this project is that c thing mm. uh, our first performances were mostly guided by that idea of doing everything live with laptops mm -hmm. and then yeah. things yeah. developed from there so escalated that, <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah and, and it's while, was while always while always you know keeping focused on these because the laptop is still our you know central working tool or mm. working context yeah and, and maybe that's one of the reasons why things are so I don't want to call them messy, organic, you know, when it comes to task management and assignments. Mm. It's because this, you know, it's this method that does everything and transforms into pretty much everything. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't really matter many times which one of us does what, you know, mm. because we have this central, say, Whenever we're working on a project, one of the first things we do is to create a central repository of files, and uh, mm -hmm. and we both work on that space throughout, you know. And we kind of mirror. We have different studios. We work together in the same space pretty often, but uh, we do have different. You know, we live in different places. We have different studios, different laptops, of course. But we try to keep these. You know, we we try to keep these working space 
um, that is common to both of us, this kind of virtual working space where mm -hmm. we can both have access to our files and our patches and they, they work across the board mm -hmm. for, for each of us. That's in, so it's like it's like you have the same kitchen basically, and you're using the same ingredients, but you add to the to the whole thing your 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 yeah. different backgrounds at at any, at any given point, which is really interesting mm -hmm. as a way of working because usually this kind of collaboration is usually okay. I'm doing the drones and you are doing the <laughs> the, the I don't know the squeaky sounds, no, but mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. It, so I understand that you are, for instance, um, because you also work a lot with, obviously, with field recordings, uh, something you, uh, if you mm -hmm. go through your work, it's it's pretty easy, and, and sets of sound objects. Um, there is this common ground, at least from, from what I've uh, listened so far, or that each of your projects is like uh, focused on a, um, a wide range, or, or not even wide, and maybe sometimes it's, it's pretty short, amount of um, of, of uh, sonorities and timbres um, mm -hmm. and I, I understand that you uh, use the same library so to speak to develop the whole thing by the end I don't know if it makes sense yeah, <laughs> yeah we use the same library but it depends the, 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 the project and idea mm. because sometimes of course we work with a lot of uh, uh, sound, um, uh, real sound, okay, mm. capture sound with uh, real recordings and so on. Mm. But sometimes we need to, f because of the idea, we need to generate sound. So mm. it depends mm -hmm. on the idea, of course. The, mm. But yeah, we have, uh, we have that kind of that big kitchen with a lot of ingredients. And the ingredients are there, of course, if, yeah. if it is outside or in the machine or yeah it depends, yeah, it depends but, but, but definitely the the, mm, yeah there's a there's a each project tends to have its own conceptual approach that's not necessarily predefined so it's not necessarily an a priori for the project sometimes it's something yeah. to which we arrive to mm. some you know somehow yeah. during the project or at the end of the project sometimes it's only in retrospect that we understand this conceptual approach because you know things tend to be messy and organic <laughs> uh which is a good thing mm. um but there's definitely that so around that we build this sometimes we build this corpus of sound you know that is pre-recorded or pre-sculpted in studio and sometimes you know there are just processes that lead us to sound um but but i guess that arriving to this palette so to speak is uh, is one of the important steps throughout the development of a project mm -hmm. and it can be very broad but sometimes it can be very narrow like for instance we are we're currently working in a in a sound installation that uh, is going to be built it's going to actually built uh, yeah. in, a gar in a garden in the north of Portugal. Mm -hmm. And that garden is part of a complex where a bunch of factories are. You know, the garden is actually owned by, um, mm -hmm. or the space of the garden is property yeah. of the, one of the factories. And um, there's a massive amount of people working there. Yeah. Mm. Like, five six thousand people something like yeah. that and the yeah. entire concept for for this piece started from the idea of um, you know society and of uh, how these clusters of people you know that cluster of people or any other develop yeah. societies and cultures and develop you know shared space so we decided to in this case as an a priori decision we decided to start working on these projects from using voice only and from using mm -hmm. the voices of the people that live there mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. work there uh and it, it's funny because originally we had decided we had thought about doing a bunch of in in situ recording sessions mm -hmm. with a bunch of people and then COVID came mm -hmm. uh and that's you know that's why the project is still not ready or also why but because of COVID, we couldn't do that. So we just resorted to cell phones and WhatsApp to actually record <laughs> the voices of the people. Yeah. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. which brought a, that was another, <laughs> yeah, 
which first technically it worked well, which that was surprising. But yeah. secondly, it also brought this added layer of complexity to the piece because the, the people, although there are instructions that we sent to, to the participants, we didn't interact with them directly. We didn't give them precise acting instructions. Yeah. Like, we didn't we didn't orient the dramaturgy so to speak <laughs> yeah. uh, but we are getting really interesting approaches you know from the people that just say the words outright with, without thinking much mm. yeah. to actual yeah. 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 elaborate yeah. constructions of their voice mm -hmm. posture of their dramatization of the text. yeah uh, and then you get the background noises which are all interesting so so yeah uh, this means that we are we are building this the, the 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 sound palette for that piece is starting from voice only and it's very constrained in that sense very mm -hmm. narrow but then it, it it's also incredibly rich so yeah i'm pretty happy with how that work is going and getting yeah. getting back to voices and, and also getting back to the beginning of the conversation mm -hmm. um because I, I i just went through and started the head and I, I didn't mention that we just listened to the um, um exclusive piece <laughs> world premiere uh, of your uh -huh. guys which it also involves voices i'm guessing is your voices um mm -hmm. and there is this game of repetition and 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 um, presentation of certain concepts throughout the piece uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about this piece which uh, people who are joining now the chat uh, you will be able to listen um and watch afterwards uh, when the when the streaming is finished um can we talk a little bit about that that piece <laughs> it's its ongoing work <laughs> yeah this one was is really exclusive yes but it's ongoing work because we start to have a, an idea and uh, okay let's translate no nothing no nothing okay <laughs> no nada mm -hmm. and we start with that idea for a work there for an installation and for a performance let's say Mm -hmm. And the performance mm -hmm. was okay, scheduled for an uh, understage place. Uh, and it's, it's a nice place we have here in Porto. It's a under, real understage of, uh, of a uh, theater. theater. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, we, okay, we project a performance but like a box inside in the box we are inside of the box and uh, people surround that box made with uh, some fog and lights and so on mm. so it's a kind of uh, let's say performance installation with light and uh, smoke mm -hmm. fog mm -hmm. and of course we are inside uh, working directly and uh, the, that idea of no nothing it's uh, it's it, it was the start of course mm. and it's strange to say in english okay to make the translation because for yeah. how for the sound of no nada mm -hmm. it's it's more uh, direct of the, our idea and mm -hmm. of course we start with all that kind of let's say words start saying the words and the words uh, the tone of the words and the, the idea of the words they mix together and then develop for uh, let's say dance um, mm -hmm. objects mm -hmm. uh, sound object object mm -hmm. yeah and that was the start of course and uh, okay with the covid we have the chance to present and it was closed because there wait, was uh, wait yeah uh, yeah <laughs> We actually got commissioned that performance about what a year ago, maybe yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So and that's an ongoing work. Let's yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then in the first wave of COVID, it was postponed uh, mm -hmm. to October last year, and we actually set set the performance up, did a rehearsal, and got cancelled like ah, I know half that's an true. hour before we started because yeah, yeah, yeah. someone <laughs> got sick in the theater. But yeah. but there's a, there's another thing to this piece which is also a postponed work by COVID, which yeah. is, um, yeah. yeah, COVID has been fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is an, an installation. An installation, yeah. And this one, just an installation that we, we started preparing for the theater, 
a different theater in Lisbon. Lisbon. So mm. the performance was for a theater in Porto. This one was for a theater in Lisbon. And they commissioned us an installation for their lobby. For, so for the space where people are waiting for the performances and where they are in breaks and whatever, mm. and where there's also a cafeteria during the day. So it's also kind mm. of a lounging area. Mm. And, but because of the characteristics of the space and safety concerns, etc., this installation had to be devised as mostly a sound only piece. So we couldn't have physical materials yeah. there, which is something we work with sometimes. So we devised this installation. We started working on this more or less at the same time. And this is where, you know, there's this common origin or this, this common idea with this no nothing um, or no nada. Yeah. But in the case of the installation, there's a there's a connection with theater and with poetry because of the theater where where the thing was going to be set up. There's also connections with our philosophical connections, if we want, with uh, François Laruelle and his idea yeah. of non-philosophy. Mm. Um, and that kind of gave us the impetus to start working with these texts. Um, but also with our own voices, oh, bringing yeah. these voices to the space of the, the, the lobby of the theater, kind of uh, building this pre or proto performance in the space of the lobby. So this one was also postponed, but hopefully it will be opened. I don't know. Sometime. <laughs> At some point in the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's ready. Uh, all we need is, you know, to, to, for the theater to be open, for them to set up six speakers and see. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. So the, this piece is called Vox X or Vox, um, and it was for TBA, uh, mm -hmm. TBA Teatro do Bairro Alto in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but it's interesting. You see, uh, not exactly the same work, but the same material, mm -hmm. and the idea of working something that it's absolutely closed, and yeah. for uh, let's say a box, and mm -hmm. the other, the other, in the other hand, we have the idea to make the work in a place that it's yeah, true. Uh, in, in, it's a place where. It's a circulation, it's open, mm. absolutely open yeah. and different, so quite different, so, yeah. But it can work yeah, so. in, in either way at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the performance was, well, it was a performance, so we, we had it prepared for 40-something minutes. Mm. It was a one-off linear thing. As yeah. most of our performances, it was pretty open because we tend, you know, we tend not to compose, to have very rigid compositions when we perform live. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to have a macro structure and we have yeah. cue points sometimes and we have, yeah. you know, these sections of a performance that are more or less defined. But then, you know, amongst the two of us, we, we actually like to improvise quite a bit in a live setting. I guess mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's one of the really interesting things of performing live. Um, <laughs> and we also have all these indeterminate factors that sometimes are brought in by, you know, the software itself. Mm -hmm. I, I like to work or we like to work with things that are not, you know, 100% controllable. Sometimes yeah. They, yeah. they are less than 50% controllable. So at least in the sense that you, you, you don't have this absolute certainty of what's going to output from your computer at any given point. Hmm. But it's <laughs> not that, it's, this is not something that we all com laptop musicians seek sometimes to, to find the, the kind of organic, accidental, uh, non-fixed right. way mm -hmm. no? in, in, yeah. in the laptop because it's something that it also happens to me that I, I need to have a certain degree of uh, not control over the machine yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. it behaves in its way. If I drop the cello on the floor, it's going to fall down and it's going to make some noise. I'm going to lose the control of it. So I'm interested in that. Yeah. Is that happening to you guys? No, definitely. You no. know, uh, And maybe it's because the laptop is the sort of instrument where you can have, at least ideally, platonically, you can have full control. We know that never happens, but mm. at least you have you know, the, the, the idea that that can happen. Mm. 
are, let me put it another way, the laptop or the computer predisposes you to think that you have full control. You know, mm. um, that's a myth, but it's a myth that's sold mm. to you along with, you know, the software. So yeah. When you mm. buy a copy of Ableton Live or something like that, mm. you are sold the idea that you can control everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> unless when it crashes. But, exactly. Um, so, but, but living with that or countering that, you know, and assuming that whenever you're working with a, with a computational context and whenever you're working with computers and CPUs and, you know, information processing, you mm. are in a, in a very dynamic and unstable text. Exactly. And, mm. and, you know, you actually need to, to, to feed that you need to, to, to extract from that the the unique aesthetic experiences that other media cannot give you so easily mm. you know? um so um, that's why that's why i think not only us but many people that with computers mm -hmm. actually actively search for this you know um mm. because this is what's really interesting in the it's not the fact that they can behave like you know like a tape player because of course you can do that and who hasn't seen laptop performances where you know the performance the performer just presses the space bar and you yeah, know, you go. does does a diffusion yeah and that's that's legitimate that's okay too, yeah of course right yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe legitimate too yeah uh, i'm not talking about milli vanilli here <laughs> but, you know that's another uh, <laughs> that's another thing another avenue <laughs> but but when you do that, you know, you're kind of wasting the potential of your tools, hmm. at least from my point. Um, you're using them as a tape player to play back a fixed linear composition when you could use them in, perhaps in, in ways that for me at least seem more interesting. Hmm. And, and, and I don't know if it happens because the, now I'm thinking um how you how 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 you manage because if you more or less work in similar in similar territories i guess there is like um uh life and 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 if you rehearse a little bit uh, if you do that um you you have to have uh, of you guys but in particular a, a pretty um, you have to know each other really well auditory speaking or orally speaking in the sense that um both of you are working on with computers, so there is no visual cue to know when when mm -hmm. is doing someone what. Um, and I'm guessing that that requires a ton of uh, communication, especially through listening I, in the in a live context. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Or you don't care? We, <laughs> you just go. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we definitely care. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking. Well, to start with, we tend not to. Our, our technical infrastructure, so to speak, yeah. tends to be pretty simple, meaning that I don't think we ever add our laptops, you know, networked or yeah. synchronized in mm. any way. We don't sync nice. mm. the tempo or yeah. we, we do not exchange any data between us, mm. between our computers uh, while performing. Mm. Um, I mean, we communicate a lot amongst mm. each other, but mostly we try to focus that communication at the sonic level. Yeah, you know, we mm. we may we may look at each other every now and then, but that's kind of rare. Uh, <laughs> or we may have. I don't think we even use cues or signs. Yeah. Ordinarily speaking, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there are exceptions because we've done. We've done performances in the past with, I don't know, graphic scores or with some mm. sort of, but mostly with other musicians, mm. with some sort of uh, uh, conducted improvisations and stuff like that. But mm. those are other things, you know. We now have this this project where where we are collaborating with Gustavo, mm. Gustavo Costa, who is mm -hmm. a, a drummer and a percussionist, and uh, we actually have a graphic score for that one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still kind of open and it yeah. gives us a lot of room for improvisation mm. um and we definitely need to keep but we have cues you know mm. we know yeah. that section two is going to be started by gustavo section three is going mm. to be started by me or whatever yeah and just requires but, a listening yeah. um 
Yeah. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. but, but the thing. The, yeah, yeah, sorry. No, go on. Pat. No, but the thing. Okay, you 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 said uh, we have really and we really know the structure. Mm-hmm. So that's the mm-hmm. kind of let's say let's say net for the the, the the performances and so on. In this case that Miguel uh, was speaking, in, uh, we have a graphic score, of, co- uh, of course, open, but with ideas, specific, specifically ideas for the sections. Yeah. So then we have the, uh, the chance to improvise, of course, the, the idea is to have that also, of course, mm-hmm. but uh, we have the structure and the structure it's really known by yeah, both by everyone mm. of course yeah and, and everyone in yes but mm-hmm. when we do well I, w- I was going to say solo performances meaning <laughs> dual performances yeah. but when it's just the two when it's just stage, you... <laughs> yeah um you know sometimes we do have a, an agreed upon and free yeah. structure for the performance but mm-hmm. sometimes we just well that depends a lot on the context sometimes mm-hmm. we just decide to improvise yeah yes yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah or to improvise based on some material for instance yeah. uh one of do quite a bit because i genuinely find that interesting is if we're working on say an album mm-hmm. and this gamel and these gml variations mm-hmm. gives us an example of that we were working on these GML variations album, which is comprised of what six pieces? I can't remember. Uh-huh. Uh, a number of different pieces, but all built around the same body of material. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was uh, you know robotic originally Amalan. we composed for a robotic Amelon. We recorded yeah. that piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, the piece had a bunch of electronic, and then we did a, a number of variations using those recordings but also using that ele- those electronics and etc mm-hmm. so we were deeply immersed in that at a certain point last december when we did um when we had a live performance uh, here in porto so we decided to use that material mm-hmm. we didn't really discuss any structure yeah we just said, let's use this and we had a bunch of files in, in in our drives we had mm. a bunch of fragments from those works that we recomposed we recomposed and reworked live mm. but without really having a, a either a score or an idea of the structure or anything like that yeah. which yeah. i guess is one of the advantages of having collaborated for 20 something <laughs> years I guess uh, so. <laughs> it's kind of, you, you kind of develop an intuition for the person <laughs> you collaborate with. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that that performance actually went so well and I liked it so much that we ended up releasing it as a single, so mm-hmm. to speak, uh, in Chronica, which is GML edition live, um, which is a live recording, something we hadn't done in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, 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 it's true. And one more thing, Edu said and right uh, quite well. Uh, we are performing, but we are also listening the thing and listening yeah. both mm. things. So that mm. that's really important, and it's mm. not a kind of respect of the other guy or yeah. the other musician, but listening uh, yeah. mm-hmm. the all the composition and yeah. all the yeah yeah the sound. But it makes total sense, and it's also interesting because um, it, it's it seems like uh, there is no no uh, distinction because sometimes you will think, okay, now we are working with on that specific piece that it's commissioned by that institution or whatever. Suddenly they call us for something completely different to do a performance, and we use that material, even that you may not express um beforehand that the concert is about that thing you just mm-hmm. use your own material at your disposal at a, at a certain point and and go with it without without closing them and just understanding it as a as a i don't know as as paint like in an empty mm-hmm. canvas right yeah mm. no we we tend to do that um we you know there's this there's this I don't know how to call it. There's this face space of the things we're working with. Mm. And we we tend to to explore that face space in whatever we're doing at a certain time. Mm. So we cannot, 
you know, it's very difficult to, to avoid that things cross contaminate each other. Yeah. And it's mm. actually good that things cross contaminate. Mm. Yeah. Each other. And mm. we often go back, you know, we go, you know, there, there are, let me put it a different, in a different way, or try to put it in a different way. So there are states that are more or less fine for some words. Yeah. So whenever you, whenever you perform live, that live performance is the final state of whatever is done there. Mm. Whenever you set up an installation and it runs for, you know, a few days or a few weeks or forever, hopefully, mm. you know, we have one that is a permanent thing. I hope it's still running. <laughs> but then there's that final state. There's a final pattern for the thing. Whenever you do an album, you yeah. know, you record music, you have linear compositions, you do a CD or Mm. digital album or whatever so you have that crystallized state of something mm. but regardless of that and because also of the tools that we use because of our approach to, 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 to the things that we build everything we, we like to think of everything as being very plastic very manipulable mm. very transformative yeah. very yeah. protean yeah. so mm. We actually like to go back and relook things, mm. to think about things again, and to, you know, maybe further develop them. Because I don't know, it's like I was reading this guy some time ago that said that that characterized art and philosophy, you know, as opposed to science, as something where you don't reach objective conclusions. There's nothing final in doing yeah. art. Mm. What there is is a conversation. Yeah. There's mm. a discussion that goes on between mm. art, audiences, critics, and then artists again and audiences again and critics and so on. So whenever you you feed this conversation, then you're actually making things move. You know, and that's the yeah. point. The point is yeah. to have the conversation, is not to have, you know, the Mona Lisa or whatever and final piece. So we really like doing that. Mm -hmm. And for instance, on one hand, we really like the, the ephemeral and very situated thing that happens with sound installations. Mm -hmm. They're site specific, they're time limited mm -hmm. uh, because of several factors. So you either see them and experience them or you don't. That's it. Yeah. And, and that adds to their value objectively. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, we're now. And we tend, you know, we always document the installation somehow because, you know, it's a practice uh, for our own memory and to, to, to actually be able to document our work. We do these small videos mm -hmm. that um, that are in our Vimeo and, um, and we're actually now working on a book that may come out closer to the end of the year or maybe in 2022 that documents our sound installations mm -hmm. at the same time um we tend we never do the sort of documentation that actually tries to replicate the experience of the installation because mm -hmm. we know that that's not possible I mean, we could yeah. do i don't know immersive video 7.1 sound or whatever yeah yeah, maybe well, that doesn't no. make sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, documentation mm. is, from my point of view, is is what it is. It just it sh it shows yeah. what you've done, and and of course, and and I really because if you are jumping to installations, I must say mm. I am a massive fan of <laughs> fan of what you do, guys. I really love your song oh, work, but you. your installation <laughs> work it's absolutely mind blowing from my point of view, um, and and it's super well documented. I must say also. Because um, I mean, you you are missing constantly the the, the possibility of of um, of uh, being there. I'm I'm in Valencia, so I haven't I never seen your work uh, live in that end. Um, concert is another thing, um, but at least with the documentation you are delivering, um, you get an idea, uh, an idea, a pretty well idea of of, of how it 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 unfolds on location and that's something it's mm. really interesting of your work um 
And one of the things that um, I find interesting about um, about your process, and, and I'm getting back because you, you mentioned it earlier that about you talk about the messiness and the organic element of, of laptops um, or working with electronics and digital art. And all you have been saying all this time, and I was thinking while you were talking about your, your live performance processes and your... Um, and the way you present your music in a live context, it does resonate again on, on your installation work um, pretty fantastically. Um, I don't know, can, now I'm, you don't see it, but I'm showing uh, some of the videos from your installations. Um, oh. I think now it's showing AAB, a this uh, installation you, you did a few years ago in which there are like two in separate Braga. spaces. Yeah. yeah, two separate spaces uh, with specific setups in each one with two kinds of uh, sound territories happening at the same time. Um, let's, I don't know, let's talk about a little bit about about this part of your work, if you feel it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a very, I don't know where to start. <laughs> well, um, well, maybe chronologically, I don't know. Um, we've been we've been doing sound installation for a while too. So we started collaborating in 2000, and I think the first installation we did was in 05 mm -hmm. in Vila do Condo. Um, yes, and really then are. and then to do more installations for a long time because I don't know lack of opportunity. And then we we started in earnest doing installations again around 13, 14, and we have been lucky enough to have had opportunities to to work on installations mm -hmm. very often for the last few years. Um, and, you know, in the end, this is a, this was a very natural extension of the work we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing in the first installation we did at the time, we were working a lot with visuals too. And um, we, we worked in a space that had a bunch of small rooms. It was a, a gallery or, mm -hmm kind of a museum thing um but it had a, a number of massive rooms were interconnected and where you could hear the other rooms and see happening there and occasionally also have lines of sight in yes rooms. so yeah. we used that to develop a piece that would expand throughout the, the entire gallery mm -hmm. not as you know different pieces in each of the different spaces but as a unified piece that would take over the the whole space of the gallery and mm -hmm. we had i don't know 20 or i don't know about 20 sound sources 20 stereo pairs distributed mm. in the gallery a bunch of projections a bunch of screens because they also had those crt tvs that were used in museums back mm. in the days um, mm. and we used a bunch of those so it, it was really interesting to, to set up the system and I guess that's one of the things that drew us to it was not only the fact that doing an installation, you know, you're doing an actual exhibition, you're doing a, a thing that allows people to to have an experience that is very different from the passive experience of attending a performance. Mm. Uh, not that listening to music is passive. Of course it's not, but anyway, you're, you're standing still and you're listening to whatever is happening. Mm. But building a system in an exhibition forces people to actually play a role in play an active role in uh, in building their own experience in exploring the space in trying to to listen in different positions mm -hmm. or yeah. or sometimes we just you know the the serendipity of going into the space at a given point and listening to something that wasn't there 10 minutes before and will not be there 10 minutes in the future so so yeah, that's one of the things that really. And it's an interesting also yeah, the way you you um, mm -hmm. dialogue between physical objects and the plastic aspect of it. Maybe Pedro can add on top of that. Uh, and mm -hmm. how um, the sounding parts. I I don't know because the, the 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 most difficult part to grasp about your work when you haven't seen it live is is um, if there is or or there is not a coincidence between in location of the sound sources and the materials on top of those sound sources or masking or, or hiding it. There is a lot of <coughs> playfulness in the visual aspect and the physical aspect of your installations that 
it does it's like for me it's like a, a perfect translation of your music at some point and there is a lot of accidental stuff in there because as far as i was reading your the information about your installations uh, you tend to really adapt to the context and and the way you put things on there um is is that something you do or <laughs> I mean, then, then like, like the, you, you confront the space and with a predefined idea, but once you are on location, things might change. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. And it, it's, it's, it's important part of the work. It's understanding the space because mm -hmm. the sound <laughs> is going out on the space, of course. Yeah. And understanding the space as a, as a, a support of the, uh, of the place, but also part of the, of the work. Yeah. Um, mm. For example, the case of uh, uh, that Miguel um, uh, was speaking about uh, the, the our let's say first installation it was really important. Okay, if if we have, for example, uh, if we have a narrative, of course we can have uh, the narrative reproduce, and we can and we don't lose the, the narrative. But the experience mm. of mm. circulate and have the experience in different parts of the the of the, the space so in that case and the others of course uh, the space is part of the work because the, we have different mm. kind of experience mm. it depends on the resonance and so on mm. it was fun in in that mm. in that uh, that uh, installation we start with the uh, sine waves and mm. leah because it was leah working with the visuals start with the pixel mm. and was the start of all that um, work Mm -hmm. uh, and the funny thing, um, in let's say in the middle of the installation, one of the small rooms, uh, Leah decided to use color mm -hmm. video, mm -hmm. and the other was only black and white and grays and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. different kind of tones that we we can have, of course. And it was funny because we decided, me and Miguel, to use a real natural sound. A granulated sound was rain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it but we can't uh, feel of course the difference of the provenience of the sound because the sound was really together and mm -hmm. the we spent some time to um make regulate this the the sound because of the different kind of experience we have in in a certain position of this and yeah. of the space because the space was really like you said, our canvas in that in mm. that. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and also time because uh, um, there is course, a, a, ge a generative uh, aspect to your work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it depends on where where you listen it to, or if you listen it from far away, it's gonna change the whole perception of the space. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Um, or depends that mm. depending sometimes on time of day because we we didn't have. I mean, we had a few. It's better to put it this way. We had a few opportunities to actually work with, um, you know, outdoors installations. Mm -hmm. One of them was the, well, if you're on our website, you yeah. can find the Lisboa solo installation. It's called Becoming. Becoming. Oh, that, that's yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. my top and that's, five. That's a good example of, <laughs> that's a good example of because this yeah. was set up for a very short period of time. Mm. Yeah. You know, for a festival organized by Raquel, and this was live for what three days, I think, maybe four. Mm -hmm. But it was outdoors, and it was in a, you know, set in the middle of a garden, relatively central in Lisbon. So it was close to the city, or almost in the city, mm -hmm. but it was a, a very lush garden. However, mm -hmm. because it was so close, it wasn't, of course, you know insulated from the sound of the city yeah a very clear thing in the space was the sound of the bridge the uh, 25th of april bridge mm -hmm. that is yeah. a very loud structure because yeah. it has a metal pavement and there's this mm. continuous drone that's always mm. going on mm. and that could clearly be heard from this space so that was a factor that we had to fact that was something we had to factor in creating this installation on the other hand, the entire soundscape of the garden changed dramatically throughout the day. Yeah, exactly. Especially in September, you know, you had uh, you know a very quiet mid-afternoon when the sun was 
making everything. You have mm. bird choruses in the morning, you have cicadas later in the afternoon, mm. night. Yeah. Yeah. You had, of course, the light that was always changing. So that was kind of the context. That was the context. That was our, you know, not at all white box where we had to set up the installation uh, the mm. not controlled at all environment mm. we had to work with and that made this really interesting mm. you know you have to account for this yeah and daily, recognize yeah, yeah for yeah, this yeah. circadian rhythm yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's there's another piece there that we we installed in a beach near near Porto actually in the mm. city of Sposen, uh, and that's a permanent installation. That's uh, Octo. That, uh, Octo, yeah. Uh, okay. And Octo. Mm-hmm. That is always that is also an ongoing thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's not on twenty four hours a day. Um, mm-hmm. It's ah that that piece is on. it's it's fixed. It's there all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At least until the sea takes it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's a permanent installation, so it's mm. it's driven by mm. well, it's driven by by a fairly system with a computer, mm-hmm. of loudspeakers, and there are timers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For the lights and, and for and in that case, you remember Miguel, we went a, mm-hmm. a lot of times to recognize the sun that we cannot clean because the yeah. sea is there <laughs> and the sound of the sea is there and the, of course the cars passing because it, it's uh, it's in the middle of the natural part mm-hmm. of the the, 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 the landscape mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. other side it's the city and it's live. Yeah alive the city of course mm. it's more organic of course but this for example the sound of the sea and the other real sound natural sounds for example w- there's a lot of visit vegetation so we mm. have also sometimes the wind and the sound of the the okay the mm-hmm. vegetation moving of course and mm. recognize that sound it's the space that we are working because mm. it's not yeah possible to clean of course exactly and it, yeah. mm. so it's 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 part of the work you have course. to to live with it and, and embrace it yes. at some point mm. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and and we use sometimes we use um, a typology of sounds that mixed with that sound it's there and mm. the other ones they are the opposite for example but with a different low level in, in the low, low level mm-hmm. so the uh, that's 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 what I said, and it's uh, really important to recognize what the place we are working when we are going to make an installation, mm. even a uh, real um, normal and uh, uh, white cube, for example. It's a white cube. It, if it if it is a white cube, okay, let's let's go. That's yeah. the, mm. the support and the start, of course. Yeah. Mm. No, but the white cube is always there, and it's also challenging in in this uh, other work of yours. Uh, I have to go to the website to check it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> one of your latest, the one that there is a lot of um, collaboration of of uh, it's uh, no, yeah. annotations Anot- sonoras. Annotations sonoras. Yeah. yeah. In that case, you re reshaped the space also architecturally. You you repainted somehow. You adapted to your. Mm-hmm. You to to your own needs and and you frame somehow sound because sometimes I don't know if it happens to you but there is this strange need uh, this visual need of 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 pointing out the attention or or framing or or saying here there is a sound here mm. is that happened to you or or it's you you don't care about it you you combine both things at the same level or it has mm. it, it, the question it will be maybe is is your a sculptural um, work um reinforcing sound or is both things at the same time doob <laughs> <Pedro? laughs> <laughs> yeah okay sometimes okay it's imp- when we have a speaker of course we have the direct sound it's impossible to clean mm. that of course we can put in the other side of the wall and of course but yeah. but, okay, but it's it's the direct sound, and uh, yes, yeah, sometimes sometimes we make. Uh, it depends of the project, of course, the, the, and the idea, yeah. of course. But uh, the, sometimes we make that 
mixing things. Mm. Recognize the the way sound is going on on the on the space, but of course uh, using direct things and uh, recognized place and recognized object. Let's say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, if we want to make that kind of experience and uh, to uh, localize the thing, yeah. Um, yeah, we have strategies to do it. It's not yeah, yeah. ours. It, we mm -hmm. have strategies to do it. So it, it's, but uh, I, I don't know. It depends. On we, we, it, we make different mm. kind of uh, yeah, uh, approaches. Definitely, to, uh, definitely depends on different, different kind of cases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it depends a lot on the project, and sometimes the, we, we... Yeah, it depends first mm. of the idea, of course, and yeah. that we use the things, the tools, you know, mm -hmm. to if it is wood or, or... Yeah, and again, and again on the space. And yeah, of course. Looking yeah. at these two, at these installations we saw in the Lisbon thing, the, mm -hmm. on the pond, we had a bunch of tiny loudspeakers that were actually placed above the water. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those allowed us to project a number of sounds on the surface of the water that sometimes, you know, sometimes it, they even, you know, they could be mis mistaken by insects chirping mm. in the surface of the water, mm. for instance. But we also had, because there was a bridge in the back, um, we also had the two bigger speakers that were actually hidden that mm -hmm. were out of sight and that mm -hmm. were bringing out this low end mm -hmm. that was you know yeah. disen disembodied so to speak mm -hmm. you couldn't figure its its source on annotações sonoras this one in the mm -hmm. in the in the museum gallery kind of space mm -hmm. we had the very visible eight loudspeakers we had loudspeakers this big array yeah uh, so the sound sources were assumed they were clearly there. But mm. on the other hand, we used, while we were setting up the installation and programming it, we, we came to, to realize two things. First, there were echoes in the room. So yeah. you could reflect sound from the solid surfaces in the room. Yeah. And sure. we took advantage of that. And then we even kind of faked some echoes because for certain sounds, when we were projecting them, say on speaker one or speaker two, we mm -hmm. made a fake echo in the speaker across the room. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So as to, on one hand, we set up these, you know, we we marked this stage mm -hmm. that was kind of communicating to the visitor, like this is the stage, this mm -hmm. is the listening area. Yeah. But on the other hand, we made it really interesting to listen outside of that stage. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we yeah. made it really, or tried to make it interesting to actually explore the rest of the room and, mm. yeah. Yeah. and not just be there in that box that, uh, yeah, it was a, a nice place to listen, but it was far from being the place to listen. But I guess, I guess yeah, when, yeah. when you yeah. work outside of the, of the, of the, regular format so to speak um mm -hmm. uh, this thing happens naturally especially when you work in 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 site specific that uh, you mm -hmm. can approach it uh, from i mean that pond that specific pond where you you set up that piece becoming um i guess you can access it from different points of view and listen it from mm -hmm. a little bit far away at some point or yeah. also listen it through or another installation uh, a little bit down the road and yeah. here are guys in the chat are asking about um um, which I guess it's already answered. Um, but mm. it, it, if if you uh, change adapt on location, um, the music you have set up on your studio. So uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that that's a question because I'm translating from mm -hmm. Spanish. Yeah. If if because you work obviously you you cannot work always on location. You kind of imagine or or think how you set it up. Then you go to, to the exhibition space and things change, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, of course, and uh, I think the the answer was already done. But <laughs> for example, for example, one thing we use that speakers in Lisbon mm. over that uh, let's say swimming pool, yeah. <laughs> the mm. tank. Okay, mm. we use that kind of speakers because we need 
to uh, uh, have uh, that kind of frequencies, and that speakers give the answer of the speakers of the the frequency of the sounds mm. that we work in in studio. Okay, yeah. but then of course we uh, have the experience, local experience, and sometimes we have. Okay, we need to not to change right uh, radically, but yeah. to make some things that we. Uh, need to have the answer, the final answer yeah. of, of the place, of course. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we, we tend to, to just, you know, close the work when we actually set it up. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's common to have to, you know, to remix or somehow, hmm. you know, rework hmm. whatever files, hmm. whatever software we have uh, hmm. developed as we are actually physically setting up the installation yeah mm. yeah. yeah yeah it makes total sense I, i'm guessing that um and what about um i'm interested in in, in this kind of in the installation context um the kind of syncing or unsyncing uh, that might produce uh, depending on in the equation of big or small speakers on location and specific sound sources. Uh, by that, I'm, I'm talking about the fact that um, if you do the, if you use a small speaker to uh, play back a really loud sound, it changes that sound dramatically. But if you use a small speaker with a small sound, it, it kind of um, creates a kind of hyper reality on location. Mm -hmm. Do you do you um, consider this kind of uh, of, of I don't know. I don't know how to call it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we tr I guess the best answer is we try to. You, you, <laughs> well, know, yeah, yeah. you can't. Mm. You can't factor all the variables in advance. Mm. I mean, there are variables you can't factor even when you're setting up the piece. There are yeah, things yeah. you mm. you only understand after the piece is done and open to the audience. You yeah, know? exactly. And then there's nothing yeah. you can do. Uh, and I mean, some <laughs> sometimes there are things you can do. Mm. Um, you you can change i don't know you can update the software or change sound files or something like that hmm. but i guess the answer is we try to we try to to worry and to think about those things and to also explore those things creative of course mm -hmm. creatively of course. so yeah. one of the one of the pieces we're working on now um that should be ready i don't know in the next few months it's mm. actually a rather complex construction but the piece is structured around these steel tubes that have 12 centimeters of diameter mm -hmm. uh, and that will have openings on the tubes and the loudspeakers will actually be set inside the steel tubes mm -hmm. so we have a roughly 12 centimeter loudspeaker which is okay mm. a decent enough full range sound speaker yeah um but we will have this resonant tube that uh, we still don't know how it will sound. Yeah, how yeah, it will we still acoustically didn't... react. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Yeah. We have an idea, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, only when we actually have what they are from three to six meter long. Whoa. Well, the steel mm -hmm. tubes. Mm -hmm. So we are very, very curious to actually have <laughs> them, you know, in place and to actually be able to test the yeah. sound and then go back to the studio and change everything <laughs> yeah. parts uh, and at the same time we then the opposite end of the piece we will have this well this other tube that but this will be more of a resonance chamber that will be mm -hmm. buried with two speakers so it will reverberate underground it will have openings where sound mm -hmm. eventually come out mm -hmm. we have no idea i mean we have no clear definite idea how yeah. these may sound yeah we could try to simulate it with composition whatever but yeah. it would always be a simulation so yeah. we will actually have to you know we can't bring a six meter steel pipe to our studio but maybe we can bring a smaller <laughs> one do some local experiences and then mm. you know do the rest on location but that's i guess Maybe because I was trained as a designer. My mm -hmm. undergrad was a communication designer. And as a designer, you try to have full control over the process. Yeah. You need to have full control over the process. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you design something, you send it to a factory, well, off a printer is yeah. a factory, and off you go. You have full specs, mm. you have full predictability of the process. Mm. And here, I really like to embrace the actual opposite of that. Um, you don't want to have full control. Mm. You, you, you need to, to, to assume that risk, you know, and to have and the responsibility, you know, of having to deal with something that is very unstable. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but the end, in the other hand, okay, I'm a visual artist and I'm <laughs> I I test all of the different kind of things in studio, and yeah. it's great. And for example, we have sometimes we have cases that we are working and recognize what what we need to have the result, yeah. because sometimes, for example, if we use transducers, we know we have the conscious that to, what the transducer can give us, and if. Yeah we choose the trans transducer it's important because the idea of that mm -hmm. kind of the, the the sound we are going to have we have that kind of test let's say in mm -hmm. studios and so on so yeah we have both cases sometimes we have surprises but even the ones that we uh, okay we really know what we are going to have even that cases sometimes we have uh, surprises and we have of course the Penalize the thing, the thing mm -hmm. uh, in places or the objects or the materials. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bit like when when we're performing live. You know, you need to react in real time to things, and you need mm -hmm. to make them work. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's that 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 old thing. You know, if you if you do a mistake, then you need to repeat it, and you need to build from there. Yeah, um, and it's the same in when we're setting up an installation. You you need to react to things as the construction is happening. Yeah. And you need to, to allow yourself to deviate from whatever original plans you have mm. and to just let the work shape itself to a certain extent. Mm. You know, you, you have to dialogue with the, the space and with the work and, and then come, you know, you have to negotiate with all these parts and come to the work. Hmm. Which, the final version of the work, whatever. Yeah, for for me, it's also it's also, it's also in a way that um, you said you mentioned a design, and I think there is a ton of design on 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 um, doing installations because it requires a lot of planning. Uh, in that case, your client is like five different things, so to speak. Is is the the client itself who is commissioning you the work, but it's also the space, the way uh, mm -hmm. your idea is conveyed on that space, and how you're gonna make it through. So the idea just um, presents itself, and also all these factors of of accidentality. Um, so, so it, I, I find it really fascinating. I could be talking about <laughs> installations for <laughs> for <laughs> two hours more, <laughs> but but I, I found it um, it's really good for for um, artists like us uh, to to embark on those project process because I don't know if you guys have the feeling, but it it tends to um, struggle against um, ego or preconceived ideas pretty well so it smashes yeah. that every time you try to do it no, no no this installation has to be exactly like that that's never going to happen it's going to be changing and, and usually i don't know if it happens to you but it, it always surprises you generally for the best mm -hmm. leading you to somewhere you 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 didn't even thought that you could go there yeah 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 if you are i would say so but you really need to, you know, to put your, to focus in it and to yeah. put your heart in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you need an installation is, or at least the sort of installations we do, I think it's something that needs to be nurtured way. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be, yeah, you, yeah, that's it. It needs to be nurtured. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't just assume that you send specifications somewhere and that, you know, mm. the museum or the gallery mm. will set it up, and you don't even need to be there because, mm. because then then you're you're, you know, you're severing that link of the mm. continuous development of the piece. Mm. I think it's something that really needs to be. It, it needs to be an open work in the sense that you, as the creator, are always at, attending to it. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know? mm. 
Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, we are running out of time, so I'm going to jump right into because people on the chat ask before um, they ask me, please talk about Chronica Electronica. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. So <laughs> let, let's jump right into it. Um, it's like uh, Chronica is almost as old as your collaboration. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Kinda. Yeah, kinda. Yeah. It's, it's kinda. a little bit younger. Chronica <laughs> yeah. is yeah, now... Yeah, yeah. 17, 18 Same. years old, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess. We started in 03, so mm -hmm. yeah, 18 years old. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and yeah, and we started it as, yeah, we started it because of our collaboration. Mm -hmm. We started yeah. it because uh, we had music we to put out um, and uh, we had had you know, less than ideal experience with another label. Um, and we decided to, to try our hand at it. Mm -hmm. Not, not as, you know, not doing self released um, mm -hmm. albums. Uh, but at the time we, we, well, Chronica was started by the two of us and a larger group of people, one of which has a um, a record store so that kind of influenced the decision um so we we thought about doing a label mostly to put out our stuff mm. eventually to release a couple of other people we were close to and that's that's exactly how we start mm. uh, so the first album was ours the second was a solo thing by pedro for a soundtrack of a dance piece that he had worked on and then we originally or initially released people that were you know from our group of friends mm -hmm. um yeah um, but then think things kind of got out of hand <laughs> escalated <laughs> again yeah and we started releasing other people because we received interesting proposals and we had the opportunity to you know to help things happen to help good albums come to light, you know, and to, to make them reach their audiences um, and make them reach other people. Mostly, you know, music that we liked in the first place, music yeah. that we thought would be important to, 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 to bring to the world somehow. And over and the years, you have been um, pretty much consistent on the um, sonic worlds you, you you tend to release but there is also mm -hmm. um, a wide variety and and seem it seems like uh, on the last few years labels are like focusing more on the format and defining itself by the format they are releasing their work rather than by the music sometimes and in your mm -hmm. case you are shifting from from different formats according to depending on on the releases um how you live with, with all those changes happening because um, yeah, I think the the, the context mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, running a label like this one has changed it over this 20 year time. Yeah, pretty so much. <laughs> how do you, how you deal with that? Well, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. To be very pragmatic, bankrupt. Um, that's <laughs> an initial concern. Uh, and that, that defines... Well, not defines in itself, but that weighs quite a bit in the decisions regarding formats, for instance. Mm. There are formats that we may find interesting or appealing for a number of reasons, but then just not feasible, economically speaking. Yeah. Uh, some other may come to our attention because they're very economic and mm. you know, viable in that sense, and then turn out to be really interesting. Like audio tapes that we started hmm. releasing a few years back uh, initially because it seemed like a, you know uh, an economic format hmm. you know it was doable in short runs and we could pair it we could pair a short run of tapes with uh, the digital distribution on streaming channels and hmm. on Bandcamp so we could kind of have the best of two worlds hmm. you know physical object that mm. some people cherish, including the, mm -hmm. the musicians and the authors, um, with, uh, you know, that of course has some limitations when it comes to sound quality, to put it mildly, mm -hmm. but, but we could pair that with the digital distribution that 
would give you high resolution files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then that uh, obviously to the development of a number of works that actually explore the affordances of the tape in really interesting ways. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, and then... It changes also because of, of the works mm -hmm. itself, because um, in my case, I, I, I yeah. worked with you a few years ago on, on cassette tape, and I think it wasn't on the original plan. You, were, you mm. proposed that on the way. It, it does change the way people uh, present to you when you say, do you think we should do that with this material or that material? Yeah, that discussion yeah. happens quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, in your case, for instance, the the idea of doing a split like uh, like the tape where you were on mm. uh, makes sense. It's actually double sided as a tape. It shouldn't yeah. it shouldn't be the mm. same thing in a CD where you have this linear sequence. Mm. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it could work on a vinyl, but uh, uh, yeah, vinyl is way too expensive. Um, <laughs> and and I don't know. Uh, generational thing because I didn't grow up with vinyl in the same sense as Pedro did for mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I don't have any attachment to vinyl as mm. many people do mm. actually I, I don't like the format at all <laughs> um, I like I like, I like. <laughs> But I like. that, so we that that's why it. there is no vinyl in Kronika <laughs> there we did we actually did two Three experiences. Three. Uh, two of them more or less standard, using mm. twelve inch vinyls. No, four. Sorry, we did a ten inch, two twelve inches, and then we did this really interesting three inch vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, but that that was the one experience with vinyl I really liked. Has you know an idea? You know, I like the other albums too. That's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. not what I'm mm -hmm. saying here. But as as an as an approach to the medium that really takes advantage and and works with the medium itself, because it, it, this was a split album with uh, Stefan Matteo and Yannick Schaffer, mm -hmm. and it was a three-inch vinyl, the size of like two minutes of music on each side, <laughs> not even. But what they did was that they composed pieces that were relatively long, like 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the vinyls were actually, you know, they were individually cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were the plates, not uh -huh. the rest. Okay. Vinyls. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. as they were cutting those five inch vinyl or three inch vinyl, CD size vinyl, um, I don't think in Imperial, so I'm confusing them. <laughs> um, the sound was continuously playing and they cut just two minutes or whatever that were playing at that time you know so yeah. it was very yeah. incidental uh, meaning that the entire run of 50 i think we produced were totally different from each other nice they, mm -hmm. yeah the covers were also unmade the, yeah it's yeah. made for a really interesting very very artisanal very crafty mm. release but for other things i don't know um i think i think it's it's a very expensive format at all level. Yeah. You know, not not only expensive to produce and expensive mm. to ship, but also expensive for the environment. Mm. Yeah, there is also that, that concern, and also because I'm mm. thinking constantly about that, about the, the pertinence and the and the need of that. Um, mm. Uh, I I kind of need the physical object, but maybe the physical object can be and, and Pedro could say the same. Um, I don't know a sheet of paper or or even I don't know a, a, a drawing with the download code behind it. For me, it's, it's the feeling. For instance, the, the the cassette is interesting because it's kind of a nice object which I'm not gonna play ever, but it may it make us less sense as a CD which I'm not gonna play ever because I don't have a CD player anymore. Um, and the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about vinyl, I'm thinking long term because I know vinyl is probably the only format that will, uh, in case of a nuclear <laughs> apocalypse, is the only thing that if you put a needle on top of it and a sheet of paper, you can listen to it. And so That's true. If, if, regardless of the apocalyptic uh, whatever. Unless in the meantime it gets too hot. Cold, too damp and exactly then kind of, exactly yeah. if, if volcanoes <laughs> the thing goes like iceland all over the place we are done with vinyls also so yeah. 
regardless of, of uh, this uh, uncertain future, I don't care. The, um, and then the question was, okay, if I don't care about cassette, why even bother? Uh, because I'm using a ton of plastic to do something. Um, but it's always it's always a debate. So finally, I'm I'm thinking, okay, maybe my next album is gonna be a a, a rock <laughs> with a download code attached to it, and I will send it by by regular mail or something like that. I don't know if it happens this to you guys. I don't I don't know I don't I don't know. I think that having memory cards or any any sort of physical token that is inscribed in the download is not the same thing. Yeah, hmm. because they're not archival media, and hmm. even if you're not listening to the tape or to the CD, hmm. the fact that you have it and that there's the potential to actually independently—I mean, it hmm. needs the infrastructure. You need yeah. the tape player or the CD player, hmm. but but you don't need the infrastructure of Bandcamp or streaming services or hmm. whatever hmm. because the music is there. It's contained. Yeah, hmm. it's contained yeah. there, hmm. and. Emotionally, I think we react to that in a yeah. very different mm. way than, mm. you know, of course it's in Bandcamp, of course yeah. it's on Spotify mm. or whatever, and you can stream it. Mm. But the it's about the attachment that we have with things, you know, mm. it's about, it's the same thing with books. One thing is to, you know, to actually have them all here and to, to have access and to, mm. to feel their physical presence. Mm. Uh, the other thing is to have a zillion books on your tablet. Your yeah. Computer. No, and and knowing there, and but, knowing that the yeah, yeah, the yeah. object itself holds that uh, at least yeah. poetically, it's it's uh, rewarding, I guess. Yeah, it is. It is quite a bit, and uh, and I guess that's why people, well, not as many as we would like, but many <laughs> people still buy music. Yeah. Um, hmm. You know, because yeah, but. But getting the object, it's it's actually also supporting the the, the musicians and supporting the label through that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, feeling but, involved. But look no, at sorry, not, but... but no, okay, okay, no problem. But look at not only as a package of the sound. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's it's the object, of course. Mm. The, Miguel yeah. uh, speak about that project, but it's it's real project because all the vinyls we have, I have a part of all the piece, the sound yeah. piece, mm -hmm. and mm. yeah, and that's absolutely interesting because it's the project was like that, okay. Mm. But yeah. for example, my box with the the vinyl with the part of the sound of installation and the other side of the vinyl, it's a. Uh, rethinking the material in studio and to make a new piece only for the vinyl hmm. and I have the the score and okay as a visual artist I make objects of course we can have the the apocalypse and so on so everything disappears <laughs> and we all, all disappear but <laughs> yeah the hmm. thing is it not only to think about uh, cassette, uh, CD, or as a package of the sound, it's part mm. of the, the, yeah. the object, mm. the, the project. We have yeah, the yeah. cover, we have uh, okay design and everything. Of course, mm. it's it's a garbage, plastic, and so on. <laughs> yes, of course, yes. But yeah. let's recycle. Uh, let's let's recycle the thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. No, it's it's important to have this physical connection. Hmm. Yeah. They are talking in the chat. They are talking about the fetish aspect of it, and also the 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 object as an emotional um, and his emotional element that has it uh, by its own. So we, we yeah, kind you of could put it hmm. like that. Hmm. Yeah. Also, you could also think about these objects as you know because we think that way. I was going to instead of fetish, I was going to go with relic, hmm. you know, and, and with yeah. how there's this how auratic this aura aspect that we tend to feel that pervades things and that communicates through things you know yeah we know i mean from an objective point of view we know that doesn't happen obviously but from a cultural point of view we mm. we really you know think along those lines there mm. is this communication between the artist so to speak the artwork and the listener or the viewer yeah either mm -hmm. and and the object plays an important part in that yeah mm -hmm. you know? absolutely and uh and when it's just excised like you have on, you know on streaming services that's a good example yeah. mm -hmm. uh, 
be it audio or video streaming services, I think it's pretty much the same thing. When you excise the object, then you kind of lose something there. Hmm. You know, and of course you gain a lot. You gain convenience, you gain quality, you gain, you know, speed, etc., etc., etc. But you lose part of the relationship. And and you know, if you think about video streaming services, mm -hmm against audio streaming services i think the problem is not as acute with video streaming because you didn't have an object to start with mm. because the relationship i mean mm. of course you had dvds and DVDs yeah but it's not the same culture mm, yeah yeah because mm. the relationship started with cinema exactly or television yeah. Yeah. where mm. the object was not there yeah. you know? yeah. um, so of course we can survive the appearance you know, CDs and vinyls and whatever. Um, and maybe, you know, from from a strictly environmental point of view, it would be a good idea to get rid of all of that. <laughs> Although, I don't know. Um, it's but... really few compared with vinyls released by, I don't know, Kanye West uh, with oh, or, or, or uh, <laughs> ecological footprint is like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But... Yeah. But I, I, I think they still contribute something to mm -hmm. to the to the artistic experience or yeah. to the aesthetic yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. They still yeah. play a role. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, now we are absolutely out of time. <laughs> uh, I could be again talking with you about these kind of things uh, for the whole evening, but um, I think we, we can leave it there f uh, here. It's been amazing talking with you guys. Um, um, and also people on the chat, you know, you can check um, they work on their websites. Uh, follow Chronica if you don't, you should. Uh, I already shared the, the links and they are doing a ton of things uh, in Portugal. Um, thank you very much, guys. I don't know if you want to add anything um, or whatever. Now it's your time. No, no, it is. <laughs> no, just, just to thank you. It was great. And, and it was a pleasure. Also, yeah. yeah. We could also chat for a few more hours. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but we have to go on with our lives i guess yeah but no, yeah it was a truly time. a pleasure uh miguel i knew you already in in the physical thing <laughs> in the physical mm -hmm. world and pedro i did it but uh, it's it's great to meeting you and you guys uh, stay tuned because i'm gonna show up um guys on the chat i'm gonna show up uh, afterwards and a uh, big thank you to you uh, miguel and pedro see you okay thank you Edu. bye se me ha descuajeringado todo pues nada chicos eso eso ha sido todo por hoy eh, este ha sido el otro otro más de estos audio talaya extra espero que os haya gustado a todos y lo hayáis disfrutado tanto como yo eh, la verdad es que tanto pedro como miguel son dos artistas increíbles que, que os invito a que a que chequéis eh, sus obras y sobre todo también el trabajo que llevan en crónica es es eh, vamos es fundamental y, y como decía esto eh, Jordi han hecho un montón es uno de esos sellacos eh, tremendos que, que bueno os podéis perder en él porque hay siempre cosas increíbles y nada eh, sin más eh, recordaros que mañana tenemos como siempre Nubol de Fum eh, y este viernes tenemos The NetLab si no me equivoco y esto será todo por esta semana porque creo que dentro del círculo fue la semana pasada 
Eh, así que es verdad, esta semana solo tenemos, solo, tenemos Nubel de Fum y... Y de NetLab. Eh, Nubo ya sabéis que es a las 11 de la mañana y de NetLab es a las 5 de la tarde del viernes. Y la semana próxima eh, también recordaros que si no estoy errado no hay eh, audio talaya extra. Eh, pero va a haber Slow Gallery y, y esta vez la cosa va de mmm, lluvia, si no me equivoco. Así que nada, eh, que ustedes lo gocen. Si habéis llegado tarde, ya sabéis que esto enseguida lo vamos a subir... Bueno, va a estar en 0, en Twitch y luego va a estar en podcast hoy mismo si me da tiempo. Y si no, mañana. Y nada, que tengáis todos un buen día. Gracias por estar ahí y puértense todos muy, muy bien. Gracias Soulseeker, gracias Animatec, eh, Fer... ¿Qué tal? Y desde mi territorio, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo vas ayer? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo va el volcán? ¿Lo has visto esta semana? Madre mía. Bueno, va, que no me enrollo. En fin, eh, nada, lo dicho, me tengo que ir. Cuídense mucho y nos vemos mañana eh, en el Nubo. Au, venga, adeu, adeu.